Hi, so this is the final bit of this really, and that's about putting it together. Now, there were a couple of points mentioned on the other videos that I actually um, didn't think about mentioning it. Uh, when we made this, what we did with the two rings is we put the split 180 degrees apart from each other. So we used two bits of material, made a ring, and then where the split was, we put the second one with the split 180 degrees apart. Now, the reason for that really is obvious, I, th I thought, hey, um, it's like plywood. The tension around the ring is going to be unequal at the point where the split is. So a bit like a scarf joint, you even that tension by putting the two splits on the opposite side and then it'll pull itself into a ring. So that's why I did that really. Now the other thing that I didn't mention that I should have done was I paid considerable care to the direction in which these coils were wound. I made sure that I knew where the start of it was, what the direction of the winding was and uh, where the end of it was. Then when I mounted them in here I actually put a mark on each of the drill holes to tell me which one was the start of the coil and made sure that every coil was in the right direction so all the winding directions are known. So when I collect, uh, connect them up, I won't be connecting one with an opposite winding to cancel the coil out. I'll know all the winding directions. Um, now, I can connect this in a whole host of ways. Obviously, we're using a straightforward north-south, north-south orientation for the magnets. So I'm likely just to collect these uh, in parallel or series, one or the other. Maybe uh, all as one phase or maybe three phase. Still haven't decided on that, but that's what I've done with it. Now, the other thing is... This thing. Let's just take that off. There we go. This thing. Oh, everything's so awkward and clumsy. And oh, so my finger. Incidentally, this is like a knife edge in certain sections, a little bit rough. Uh, and it's also very heavy. So when I pick this up, um, I need to pay due care and attention, and sometimes I don't. And that's where that came from. It's quite a nasty cut, but it's just me really not paying enough attention. But hey, such is life. I suppose I could have worn gloves, but you know, if you're gonna do stuff, you gotta accept that every now and then you're gonna get the cut and you just live with it. So I just super glued it together and lived with it. Another fantastic use for superglue. Superglue, incidentally, was invented by the Americans during the Vietnam War for surgery, so it's brilliant for gluing cuts together. I'm sure loads of people know that. Anyway, to this. What we've got here are the five stairs holding this, and this rod in the center gets fixed to the base. So effectively, that's fixed and this rotates. Now we can use that. We need to make sure that that's kept free, but we can attach to the stairs here as long as we leave that central rod free. And that's what we're going to do with the ring. So this ring here is gonna be attached at points on this part of the ring to those stairs. This fan blade won't be attached at all. So when we did this in the last video, we just put a temporary um, axle in there to show that it could actually generate. That axle's not actually used. And the fan blades, in fact, don't carry any weight at all. This ring is carried by these stairs, which is why it's not too worrying that the ring is actually really relatively heavy for this connection with the fan blade. That fan blade connection is actually quite weak. And the main reason for that is um, I have no idea whether this is going to be good or not. It's just an idea that I had from a bit of reading that I did. I decided to try it. We'll see if it works. If it's rubbish, then all I have to do is run a trimming knife down those joints and to take the fan straight back out again and then do it without the fan. Now, originally I was going to do a motor with this. I thought about bolting a motor onto it. And that was the first thing that I thought of doing when I started to look at this. But then after um, doing that thing that we did on the exercise bike and having those ideas about um, speed of rotation and low torque instead of uh, slow rotation and high torque, I obviously changed my ideas about what was going to be done. And I'm quite fascinated by this idea of the large magnetic ring moving slowly in the centre but quickly on the external, which we talked about again in a different video. And so I changed the plan uh, from the first stage plan till we got here on this later stage plan. That kind of thing happens. I mean, I'm learning as I go, as well as everybody else. I've never done this before. And so for me, this is pretty much a learning experience too. And so there's a, a deal of little bits of changes that go on. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get this fixed in. What we do to fix this in is, as I say, 
drill it out so that it's free to spin on that central axle, or equally the axle is free to spin through that, mark it up and fix it to the stairs. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so that's my central ring attached. Now I've actually removed this once I get it attached so that you could see how it's attached. And you can see that all I've done is fasten the central ring onto the stairs using these angles, which is these things. That means that that bar is still free to rotate. So when we fix that bar to the base and the wind catches this or the thermal updraft catches it, it will rotate, rotating the ring, obviously. So what we need to do now is put that bit into the base and we fix that bit to the base because this rotates relative to the base. Now with this fan, I read a paper on this from Australia saying that if you added a fan to this, then it would improve the efficiency by about 40%. Or so they claimed. I don't, I don't know what they mean by that, but clearly they had some idea that you got an improvement. Now, wind direction with these things matters in the blade, the way the blade is facing. So being able to remove it means I can swap that blade around, or I can just do without that fan blade if it actually doesn't make an improvement or not. I'm going to try it with it, and of course we're going to test both directions with and without the fan blade added. Also, if I did want to play with it, then I could change the profile of these blades. So it can be handy to remove that fan blade. I left the fan blade in while I marked everything up, because then I knew the centre. Then I removed everything and then I fixed it all down and now I can put the fan blade back in because this fan blade, remember, carries no weight. All the weight of the ring is carried by these stairs and this upper structure. Okay, that's enough blabbing. Now, <laughs> let's get this bit fixed to ah, this bit. So to fit this thing was a piece of cake because we made it the right size. All I did was remove those central stairs put the ring in and I removed the central boss because that central boss was just for that demonstration. Put the ring in and then fastened everything back together. Now the stairs did go at the top here. So where the stairs went, there we go, I just found some very short screws and screwed those into where the stairs were, otherwise it gets even flimsier. So the whole thing has now been screwed to this plastic ring, but the stairs have been moved. And you can see here, we've got a couple of drill holes where I remarked it and the stairs will actually go in there. As luck would have it, ah. That central bar will actually reach through the ring and reach the new position of the stairs, which is great. So all I have to do now really is slot these two bits together, bolt the stairs back in. <laughs> okay, so there it is all back together. There's the uh, coils ring, there's the magnets ring. That actually I did have to extend. I sawed the bar off and used a 12 millimeter extension bolt and then put some 12 millimeter bar in it. It's no surprise, I mean, I did drop the stairs, so I had to extend that. So I really only got one job to do and that is wire the coils together and then I get it in position and see if the thing will spin and see if it will generate. Now, of course, this is a learning exercise for me as much as anything else. And um, if I were to do this again, what I would probably do actually is stiffen up the stairs. They're, they're mm, fairly flexible, so there may be problems with that. We're going to find out anyway. So let's get it in a position. Okay, there it is to set up to read volts, and I can tell you it's spinning quite well, even in the lightest of breezes. I mean, it's actually turning a lot slower than it looks, probably, because there's it's just not enough wind to do very much, but it is actually moving that. Now I've got these wired in uh, parallel actually. Okay, well, to be honest, actually, I think that was really kind of impressive. I mean, I did wire it in parallel, so we got more amps and we got volts. 
The volts was sort of like two to three volts, something around about there, but we were getting a good two or three amps out of that, so that's a good, what, somewhere between six and nine watts, I suppose. Now, it really didn't have a particularly strong breeze, but it had no trouble turning at all. Um, obviously, it wasn't on the load. <laughs> obviously, I did the volts and amps separately, so it's telling you that there's um, going to be some error in those measurements, and I'm okay with that. I mean, it's also telling you that the damn thing is working in principle, which I'm even more okay with. So I thought it was pretty cool, actually. Now, I did have a lot of trouble centering it, uh, and so there was quite a problem with it rubbing for ages. It took quite a while to sort out. And that's really to do with the uh, quality of the build of this. I mean, it's not really meant to do what we're doing with it, so it is a little flimsy for that. But uh, I really liked that idea, and clearly it can be made to work. Now, I don't know if you saw it. I certainly did. When I was putting this together, I saw a ducted fan. So I think it, it would be a good improvement to ducted fans as well as these roofline ventilators. Uh, and it's sort of um, building on that idea that we looked at when we were doing the exercise bike. Now, traditionally, what you do is you bolt a motor onto the centre. And for something like that, you need quite a bit of torque to turn it, especially if you're going to make it do work. And it's just the same principle as a lever. If your point of your lever is uh, away from the thing you're trying to lift and your lever's very short, then it takes a lot of effort to move it. If you have a long lever and um, your fulcrum point is near, it takes very little to effort to move it, but more time. Uh, or if you like, more speed. And of course, we've come right out on this circle. It's a good two foot across. So the speed at the edge of the circle is considerable when related to the speed at the center. So if we bolted something onto the center, it probably wouldn't work. The fact that we put it on the edge means that we get that leverage advantage that we would be missing if we put it on the center. Uh, and that's why I don't think bolting a motor onto the center of this would be particularly good. But as I say, when we were looking at the exercise bike, we looked at putting things on the rim as opposed to putting things on the center. I mean, there are more technical challenges, or rather different technical challenges, in arranging things at the rim of a, sphere, of a circle than there is at the center of a circle. But we took that on board and we arranged it on the rim. And that's the thing that I'm really fascinated by now. Not, not so much this. I think this is awesome that this could be got to work to any degree at all. But I'm really fascinated by that idea of high speed, low torque, and at the circumference of something rather than at the center. Now, there has been a move from that idea of things at the center needing high torque to axial flux generators where you have a flat plate. That flat plate begins at the center and goes out to the edge. And this, I think, is a slightly different arrangement where we don't look at the plate at all. We're only looking at things that are happening on the circumference. So that circumference seems to be quite a good way for um, harvesting energy, particularly when you have a low torque application. So I'm quite fascinated by that as an idea, and I'm probably going to be looking into that and more of those low torque applications because, because you know, there's quite a lot of that kicking around. There isn't that much around where we get a high torque. We need fairly strong winds and, and massive turbine blades when we're looking at stuff like that something like this, then there's a lot more of that around that could be scavenged and harvested. And I liked that idea that that seemed to be um, verified, or at least borne out, by this set of experiments. I mean, if you're looking at something where it's a complete thing and you just want to turn that into a generator, the answer is, yes, you can do it. And actually, it does quite well, even in the lightest of breezes, as long as you go along the circumference of it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video series and thank you very much for watching.